So we back with another video and today we finally, finally we're getting into the bracket. We know all the seedings, we know all the matchups, a couple of different things we gotta change here and there, but we know pretty much everything that there is to know at this point in the playoffs. And all we gotta do now is do the bracket and do our predictions for what everything's gonna happen. Now, I also will be making a video doing my award predictions, but that will be coming out later, or pretty not my predictions, I would probably do my opinion based off who will win in that video. I probably will also probably predict who will actually win, but I probably have varying opinions of what actually should happen on a couple of different awards here and there. But yeah, that's going to be pretty much what we're doing. That's what's going to be coming. If you guys do want more of these NBA videos, it's going to probably be the last video of the marathon where I've been giving y'all pretty much back to back to back to back daily uploads of the NBA videos. So if you guys want more of these videos, just make sure to like the video. All throughout the playoffs, I can keep giving y'all content. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Without further ado, let's hop into it. So we finally, finally, we have made it to the NBA playoffs. And it's about that time of the year, really the best time of the year. And we're going to be predicting these playoffs, figuring out who we believe will be ending up with a ring or the NBA champion, or just even in the finals. So yeah, we're gonna be doing a play-in first, moving round around. Um, some series I may give like what I think, like it will go, stuff like that. Last year, I was very accurate with it. I was really accurate. The only thing I really messed up on was the Nets, but that was, that was complete domination, I'm not gonna lie. And yeah, we're gonna move into it. Um, let's just hop into it. So play-in, we're gonna start with the play-in first. Playing. So the first games we're gonna do the seven eight because that's gonna really determine who's the seven seed. So for the seven eight matchup, we're gonna start with the Heat Hawks. As a Heat fan, I've said time and time again, the Heat are very very bad this year. Um, but I do I do kind of like what they've kind of done in the end of the year. I still don't really like the rotation Spo has been running, but I do think that's he's gonna kind of be more reliant on the top three guys so that the depth the depth is not gonna be as big of a deal anymore. Um, I do think that all three of the guys have really made improvements to be able to play with each other, like significant improvements. Um, I do think the Heat just have Trey Young's number. I don't really see, don't really see what the Hawks gonna really do. I think it could be a very close game because the Heat have been just that inconsistent team all year. But I, if I had to bet on it, I would say the Heat are going to win. I would not, but but be but listen to me as a Heat friend. This year, this would be literally the least predictable thing ever if the Heat lost this game. I want y'all to understand this. It would be the least predictable thing ever if the Heat lost this game. Like, for this season, it would make the most sense. It literally would. But I'm going to go ahead and say the Heat out of um, honest confidence. I'm about to say the Heat. Um, for the uh, other play-in, for as much as I want to see the Lakers and the Nuggets play first round, um, as much as I want to see the Pelicans and the Lakers play a playing game, I don't know how they trolled that, but it is the Lakers and the Minnesota Timberwolves with all the things going on with the Timberwolves. McDaniels broke his hand punching a wall. Rudy Gobert is fighting his teammates. Um, Kyle Anderson is having disagreement with Rudy Gobert, saying that they're babying him, all different types of stuff. So, yeah, um, I don't know if that's a fact. That's just what came out after the fact, but we know how that stuff go. Like, the NBA gossip is like... Bro, it's like the stuff outside of the games is like really gets more popular than the games itself. It's actually kind of crazy. Because who the hell cares about Timberwolves? Like all year. This is the most I heard about the Timberwolves in a couple weeks. But um, I'm going to say the Lakers are going to win this. They're going to end up going against the Memphis Grizzlies. And I think they're going to win this comfortably. I could see this being a closer game than people expect. Because Ant has been playing up really, really well. Last year in the playoffs, he played really, really well. And the Timberwolves actually got the job done in the playing. But I think the Timberwolves actually had a better team last year. They may not have D'Lo anymore. And that may be an addition for subtraction. But um, I think not having um, the, the guy that's actually on the Lakers now, I think that's going to make a big difference. Um, so, yeah, I think... Their defense as a whole is just not going to be as good. And I want to say the Lakers are going to move on. Now, for the 9 10 to go ahead and play the losers of those games the Raptors versus the Bulls. Um, This could go either way, to be honest. Because they're both. It's kind of crazy. The Bulls are funny. Last year, they couldn't beat none of the top teams. But when they played top teams this year, it feels like it's always been a kind of competitive game this year. And last year, there was an offensive team that played no defense. And this year, they have a bad offense. And they play 
I, I think they're ranked number one defensively. So it's actually kind of crazy what's happened with the Bulls. I think their way that they play is more suited for the playoffs this year. And um, I trust the Raptors coach more, but I think the Bulls have a good coach. I trust... Um, I don't really trust nobody, none of the players. I like, I think OG and Anobi is like, I like his game. I like him a lot, but like offensively, he's not like the first and second option. I think the first and second option are more reliable than, than the Raptors. I think DeMar DeRozan and Levine is just more reliable, but I could see Pascal Siakam being the best player in this game. So it could, really, this could go either way, honestly, to be real with you. Um... It really doesn't matter which one of these teams win because they're going to go against the Hawks. Oh, I was going to say because they're going to go against the Bucks, but they have to go against the Hawks. So, if I'm being real, I think the better team should, I think the better team should be the Raptors. But I'm going to be honest, Vucevic has played a lot better than um, expected this year. I think Zach Lavina's late has been really playing really well. Um, DeMar DeRozan has kind of been a little shaky. But I feel like, I've said this time and time again, I think that Zach Lavine has to be like their their their, 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 their number one option if they're going to be able to do what they want to do. I think DeMar DeRozan is going to be a lot better and more like a Chris Middleton role on offense where he's he's going to get those shots in the clutch. He's going to get those shots in, like, in possessions where they're really fighting tooth and nail and they just need a bucket. That's where DeMar DeRozan comes in. But I think for today's offense, I think Levine just does suit a little bit better as a number one more than DeRozan. So that's going to be interesting. And when I'm looking at the Raptors, I do like their defense one through five. But I do think that the fact that the, the Bulls have like really good wings, I think that the Raptors do match up well with that with Ananobly guarding whoever he's going to guard. Um, so I do think they match up well. It's just, I don't know. I, I feel like the, I've just got a feeling the Bulls, like this would be, the, this like, it, like again, like I was saying with the Heat, it would make a lot of sense for the Bulls to end up winning this game and even winning the next game to make it to the eighth seed. That would be very Bulls-like, but I'm not trusting the Bulls. I'm going to go with the Raptors. I trust their coach more, so we're going to go ahead and move the Hawks up here to go against the Raptors. Pelicans and Thunder. Now, this is all bias. Honestly, I want... I want the Thunder to make, go, make it to the next round, but I think they're just too young. I could see the, the Thunder winning, but they don't really have a big. The Pelicans have a big. Um, they're going to really be really reliant on their wing, their guard play really from Josh Giddy and Shea, and even Will, Jalen Williams a little bit. But, yeah, I think whoever wins this is going to be the AC, to be honest, especially with everything the Timberwolves got going on. If McDaniels was healthy... I would be thinking differently. It could be very close, even with the Lakers. If Rudy Gobert was healthy, I think Rudy Gobert would be a really good, that would be a really big, important piece to play against a team like the Lakers that don't really want to shoot too many threes and want to get to the paint. But I don't know if he's even going to play. So I just trust, uh, it's not really that I trust B.I. because I trust Shea probably more than B.I., especially on both ends. But B.I. has been hooping. He is balling out of his mind. I think they kind of could be on the same tier in terms of playoff translation. Especially with the fact that Shea has not played, but like one time in the playoffs, and that was when he was like a the back, like the second option or something like that. So this is kind of tough. I think the Thunder are just young, so I'm gonna say the Pelicans, and the Pelicans kind of need it more. They're trying to give uh, Zion as much as po time as possible to come on back. So we're gonna say the Pelicans end up winning. We're gonna go back to the East, who is winning between the Raptors and the Hawks. Honestly. I think the I think the Raptors could play the Hawks very similar to how the Heat played them last year. I think that is going to give them struggle, but I do think the Hawks actually have good players that they can throw out there. But yeah, I think the Hawks end up winning this. To be honest, I don't really see a world where the Hawks lose to the Raptors because I the Jonte Murray has been a very constant by Donovich. I think a lot of the stuff that the, I think the Hawks just have a better team. Um, I think the, the Raptors have a better coach, but Quinn Snyder is not a bad coach. I haven't really seen him do too much with that team since he came to the team, to be honest. But, yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and say, I had to go ahead and say the Hawks. I think the Hawks move on. Going back, I think the I think the Pelicans move on. 
I think the Pelicans move on past the Timberwolves, to be honest. I, w I really do think that's what happens. Um, but it could go either way. It really could. Ant could play out of his body. But I think the Pelicans are just, they got that depth. They got the wings. They got the guard play with CJ McCollum. They got a big. I don't think their bigs are really competing competing with the Timberwolves, the Timberwolves. But I can see Valentunas having a great a great game in this game, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. Especially if Rudy Gobert doesn't play and he's going against Towns. So, yeah, I, I, I can see the Pelicans really winning in all aspects. And I can even see Brandon Ingram outplaying Anthony Edwards. But like I said, it could go either way. Anthony Edwards could play a great game. The only thing I'm really saying is I don't really trust Towns too much. Towns could play awful, but he also could play good. So, like, there's really no in-between with Towns, to be honest. He either could get in foul trouble and be unplayable the whole game, or he could really just be hitting his shots. So, it could be it could be very interesting what happens with the Timberwolves, in my honest opinion. So, let's go ahead and hop into the East. All right, so let's hop into the actual playoffs. We out of the play-in. We got all the matches made. Let's go ahead and hop into the playoffs. So, first round, going to the East, going down. We're going to go we're gonna go from down on the East all the way to the West, like we did with the play-in. So, with the East, 1-8 seed, the Bucks versus the Hawks. Honestly, I think the Hawks, bro, the Hawks are really good on paper. Um... They have some really good pieces on that team. Um, but Drew Holiday versus... I, I'm really interested to see what they do when it comes to that that backcourt with the Hawks. If they do play the Hawks. Because even when... Even that last time, they kind of got problems with the Hawks when Giannis was playing. They kind of was having problems with the Hawks just like everybody else. So I'm interested to see how they play that. Because are they going to keep playing drop coverage versus Trey Young? Are they just going to let Drew, Drew Holiday down screens against Trey Young like they do with a lot of teams and let Brook Lopez play drop coverage? I know they be having Giannis as a roamer, but if they put Trey Young, bro, uh, Drew Holiday on Trey Young, who's going to Jante Murray, it's a lot of things I'm very interested to see what happens, but the Bucks do have a lot of depth, and I do think that they could play. The only thing I say about the Bucks is they don't really make adjustments, but I do think they have the time to win out against the Hawks. I can see the Hawks getting one, maybe two games if they play them. Um, but I'm gonna say the Bucks move on and that's really depending on no matter who they play I think if they play the Raptors, I think the Bucks may even sweep the Raptors um, They don't have the size to really compete with the uh, Raptors Well, they have the size when it comes to six nines, but they don't really have like a, a true seven-footer They Oh, they do have Yaka portal So I ain't gonna lie the Raptors may be a, a tougher matchup for the Bucks So the Bucks may be actually hoping for the Hawks So I ain't gonna lie they, they actually do probably have a tough match because they actually do have that size I forgot they got portal but that's interesting. I forgot about that. Um, moving down to the Cavaliers, Knicks series. Um, I think this could be a fun series. Um, like I said, when I was ranking the players, I think Jalen Brunson is going to have a good playoff translation. I think um, a couple of the players on the Knicks are going to be really good. But I'm, I'm going to say the I'm gonna say the Cavaliers will end up winning this series. I just trust more players on the Cavaliers. I trust Donovan Mitchell. I trust Darius Garland. I trust. I just trust more players, even the new play, like the first year. Now, I do think there are players on the Cavaliers you could try to exploit because this is a playoff scenario. So I could see Jalen Bronson trying to get Jared Allen in pick and roll to switch out on him. I could see a lot of stuff like that. I don't know. I think the Cavaliers will try to make adjustments for stuff like that. So I do think the Cavaliers will end up winning. But I'm interested to see that that Evan Mobley Julius Randle matchup. I'm interested to see that is Julius Randle gonna be an extreme playoff dropper this year like he did the last time when they played the Hawks. Um, I'm interested to see a lot of stuff with the Knicks. Is RJ Barrett going? If RJ Barrett can play beyond what he played in the regular season, um, if Emmanuel Quick, Emmanuel quickly can, can keep that consistent, if Jalen Brunson can compete, be just as good as he was with the Mavericks last year. The Knicks could upset the Cavaliers. They could. They definitely could. But um, I'm going to say the Cavaliers, and I'm going to say in like six games. I'm going to say in like six games. The 76ers and the Nets, I think this is the biggest wash out of all the teams in the East, to be honest. I think this was – I think the, the Brooklyn Nets could cause – to be honest, the Brooklyn Nets could cause a lot of fits. I could see a lot of these being close games, kind of similar to how the Raptors series was last year. I do think that they have a better big man matchup for Embiid. I think Claxton is still a little bit too little. I'm not going to lie because Embiid this year has been a lot. I, I think if this was last year Embiid, he may could cause him some struggles because Embiid was a little bit less consistent. This year he's been super consistent. That mid-range has been pretty much auto all season. So 
Yeah, but I do think the Nets could give James Harden some struggles. Like, they got some defenders over there that can cause a lot of turnovers and get a lot of easy points. So I can see the Nets steal a game somehow, but I think every game could be very, very close because the Philadelphia 76 do have that slow pace offense style. But yeah, I could see I could see the Nets making some uh, some uh, some not some of them, but pretty much all the games close and may steal one. But I'm gonna go ahead and say the 76 is go ahead and win that series. The Miami Heat versus the Celtics. Um, the more I think on it, every single time we've played the Celtics, being real. Every single time we played the Celtics in, since we've had this trio of pretty much Bam, Harrow, and Jimmy. Even when Jimmy is not fantastic, we beat them. Now, when Jimmy was fantastic, it really was like he had no help. But the first time, Jimmy wasn't even a top three scorer against the Celtics that year, and we still beat them. So, they were going Dragic, Hero, and Bam outscored Jimmy in that series. So... There is a chance, but the thing is, we're not nowhere near that type of team anymore. Um, I think we are more similar to last year playoffs. If you remember us in the playoffs, we really was heavily dependent on Jimmy. Heavily. We was a defensive team that was heavily dependent. Now, the thing is, I think the, I think the Celtics could get a lot of free points, but we're going to make... We're going to make a lot of these games very, very competitive. I think we could steal two, maybe three in this series. We, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I genuinely would not be surprised if the Heat won the series. But I think for a fact, I think for a fact the Celtics are going to go ahead and win this series. But I would not be surprised if the Heat stole this series. But I'm going to say the Celtics in six or five games. I'm going to say the Celtics in six or five games. I'm putting my bias aside. I had to say that. Okay. Next, we're going to the West. The Denver Nuggets versus the Pelicans. I'm going to be honest. I ain't going to lie. Zion can come back around game three. This could be very interesting. This could be a very interesting matchup right here. Because the Nuggets don't really have a rim protector at all. Zion will come to in this series and dominate. He would dominate in this series. I'm not going to lie. Zion would literally dominate that paint. He would score at will every single possession in that paint. Bri would it would make the it would make Garden BI so much more difficult. Cause you would have to put Aaron Gordon on Zion Williamson. Cause at that point, who who are the who are the Nuggets gonna have as their player to guard Bi? That would be very interesting to see. All that is fan uh, fan fiction though, because we do not know if Zion is gonna come back. So based off that, I'm gonna say the Nuggets go ahead and win. I wouldn't be surprised if it, was, it went five or six because B Brandon Ingram is that good. C McCollum is a playoff player. Um, I do like some of their wings they have. Like Trey Murphy's a great shooter that can play some defense, but Herb Jones is a great defender that can shoot the ball. He can even pop off for some points. Um, I like a lot of people that they got over there, Valencia Unis, but I think Jokic is going to dominate. Just like I was saying, Zion, regardless of if Zion plays or not, I think Jokic is going to dominate in this series. So Jokic seems to be a lot more aggressive in the playoffs, but he does kind of I can see the Pelicans stealing games, kind of like how the Warriors were stealing games late last year. In the late in the games, they would steal games by putting, they would put Jokic in the pick and roll, and Jokic on offense would be a little too passive. Like in playoffs, you can't rely on your role players too much. But I do think the fact that he's gonna have his number two and number three, he can rely on his his other players a little bit more, like he was last year where it wasn't working. So I'm gonna say the Nuggets. The Suns and the Clippers, I'm saying the Suns very quite easily. This probably is the easiest series to predict, honestly, because of the fact I just don't trust Russell Westbrook in the playoffs. Um, after watching that Lakers game, the Lakers were dominated, but in that second half, um, it really was apparent that, like, the Clippers are just not that good. They're just not. They're, they have all the, – they. I don't really even know what the hole is. Zubak has played, like, a pretty decent big – um, they don't really have good guard play. They don't really have good bigs play, but they have good wings. Like, they have decent guard play and decent bigs, but, like, they're pretty much a wing-based team. And that's cool and all, but the Suns have a – they're going to have a, the better guard. They're going to have the better big. <coughs> and you could argue they have the better wings with Devin Booker and um, Kevin Durant. And that's even if Paul George plays. And take that, take Paul George out to simulation. I don't, I'm not gonna lie, that may be better for the Clippers because that's gonna be making Kawhi be a little bit more aggressive. 
But I think that's going to make it a little bit easier for the Suns to play defense. They probably just don't. I was watching how LeBron was guarding him. They could just pretty much try to deny Kawhi the ball and make somebody else beat them. Maybe Norman Powell has to play like that the whole series if they want to compete. But um, the Suns offense just seems a little too good. Um, I like some of the players that the Suns have off the bench. I think their depth is a little underrated and overrated at the same time because some people say they have no depth, but at the same time, some people are kind of overrating players like Terrence Ross and TJ Warren or whatever the name is. But, yeah, um, I'm going to say the Suns in this series. I do. I think I trust Kevin Durant. A l I ain't going to lie. Kawhi may be – no, I think I may trust Kevin Durant a little bit more than Kawhi, but Kawhi is up there with KD in that same tier, in my opinion. So I'm going to say, yeah. Yeah, that's what I say for that. But I do think the Suns have a better team. Kings and the Warriors. I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm going to be honest. I think this is going to be a better series than what people think it is. Now, everybody's going to say the Warriors are winning. But I think people are negating the fact that Mike Brown has coached phenomenally this year. And he knows what the Warriors want to do. So, I think that's going to have a big impact on it. I think the Warriors defensively has not been nowhere, nowhere near where they were last year. Even when Gary Payton comes back, even when Andrew Wiggins comes back, or not Gary Payton comes back, even when Andrew Wiggins comes back, even with Gary Payton back, I don't think I don't think the Warriors are a good defensive team this year at all. Um, I think that a lot of that has to do with Mike Brown. Even though Mike Brown doesn't have the Kings really playing good defense, but I do know for a fact the Kings offense this year – is a lot better and it's that system is amazing now one thing i will say about the kings that dribble i don't the dribble handoff i don't think that's really good for the playoffs i don't think that really translates a lot in the playoffs especially for a team like the warriors where they don't really have any bigs um I, they're gonna need Sabonis to be a little bit more aggressive in this series so yeah but i think another thing just like what happened last year with the nuggets they going to really they going to put Sabonis in that pick and roll. They going to make Sabonis defend. So that's going to be a kind of a big deal. But I do think it's going to be a lot closer than that Nuggets series cuz if you remember those Nuggets Warriors games, a majority of those was close all the way to the fourth quarter and in the fourth quarter, it was either the third or fourth quarter they would just take off. Like it just would. And I don't think the Warriors are as good of a team as they were last year, but that's a fact. Um, so I could definitely see these games being a lot closer. I, I I would be thoroughly surprised if the Kings won, but at the same time, I have a feeling. I'm not gonna lie, I do have a feeling, but I'm gonna go ahead and say the Warriors. And I could honestly say this series going six or seven. I'm gonna say six though to be safe. I'm gonna say six. I didn't say what this was gonna go. I think this goes five, maybe four. I'm not gonna lie. I think Kawhi gets a game though. Lakers and the Grizzlies. I've said time and time again, out of all the like the top three seeds. The team that the Lakers least want to play is the Grizzlies. Now, I was saying that, and I was forgetting Steven Adams is not going to be there. So that is going to make a difference. But I honestly, at the same time, they can play a better offense for a job where they can spread the floor, have Jaron Jackson kind of play, match up with Anthony Davis 5-on-5. Five five. Um, they can play a little bit bigger like that, and I think they could be interesting. They put, like, Dylan Brooks at the 4 to guard LeBron, they could match up. They could match up really well with the Lakers, um, to be honest. But the way the season's going for the Grizzlies, I would not be surprised if they lost. But I do think that this is not the best matchup for the Lakers. Now, I will say this. I think the Lakers get that seven seed. If they can get past the Grizzlies, they could. this is like the best side of the bracket for them to make it to the, the, the conference finals. Because if, if they would have been, if they make that eight seed and they play the Nuggets, I think they have a better chance of beating the Nuggets than they have of beating the Grizzlies. But the reason why I don't think they're going to make the conference finals, I don't see them beating the, the Suns. But if they play the Warriors, I would probably give the Warriors that edge. But I think they have a better chance of beating the Warriors than they do of beating the Suns because I don't know what it is. LeBron against... Curry, the Warriors and Curry, he just has them figured out. He just knows everything that the Warriors want to do against him defensively and offensively. So I just think that is a big thing with me there when I'm go with him going against the Warriors. But we have yet to see him play them in the playoffs on the Lakers. So that is going to be interesting. But if I'm being honest, in this series, 
The Lakers gonna need Anthony Davis to play out of body, in my opinion. They're gonna really need because Ja, I think Ja's gonna play good against the Lakers. I do. I do. I think they're gonna I think the Lakers gonna try to put like I think they're gonna try to put um what is bro name? I can't think of bro name at all, but um I want to him on the heat. I don't I can't think of the name, bro. I just had a brain fart. I can't lie, but um they're gonna try to put that dude on the uh Lakers that play phenomenal defense. I don't know how I'm forgetting bro name. Forget it. I ain't gonna lie, but I think they're gonna try to put him on Ja. Ja gonna wanna try to get downhill. Um Desmond Bain. I'm interested to see the matchup that the Lakers do against the Grizzlies. I wonder who I think I'm pretty sure LeBron is gonna guard Dylan Brooks. I'm pretty sure Anthony Davis is gonna guard. It's gonna be interesting because I think that the Grizzlies going against the Lakers, if they can put Anthony Davis on Jaron Jackson and he can take Anthony Davis at the paint, Ja could feast. He could. Now I do like that defender that the Lakers gonna have on him, but Ja with a wide open paint is gonna be it's gonna be kind of tough. That's gonna be interesting. Them picking pops with uh bro, that's gonna be kind of tough. So that could be very interesting. I think that I think this matchup is just not for the Lakers. I think the Grizzlies could upset the Lakers. And yes, I think if the Grizzlies was to beat the Lakers, it would be an upset. I think the Lakers were for majority of people, they would everybody's gonna think the Lakers are gonna win. In. I think if the Lakers do get past them, that's gonna is they, they have a better chance of beating the Warriors than they do the Grizzlies. It's just matchups to me. It's just matchups, and I think um, Jaron Jackson being one of the best rim protectors, but he does draw. He does. He does be in a lot of foul trouble, and the Lakers do get a lot of fouls because that could be a, a, a big impact on it. So the Lakers could win because of that. So it's really, it's just really kind of weird. It's kind of tough. It's just we'll see. We'll see. That's my that's my hot take series out of all these series. Didn't really have an upset. I'm not picking that to be an upset. It's kind of wild because I'm saying that's like my upset series where we have the Warriors and Kings. That's a 3-6, but I'm pretty sure majority of people think the Warriors are going to go ahead and win that. Going back to the East, Bucks versus the Cavaliers, I honestly think out of all the teams in the playoffs, the Cavaliers match up the best for the Bucks. I think the Hawks, the Hawks have a very underrated matchup for the Bucks as well. But I think the Cavaliers, like I've said multiple times, Darius Garland is a is like the really more prototypical version of Trey Young. He's the more ideal version. He's not gonna be volume, be a volume scooter, scorer, not scooter, scorer like Trey Young. But he's gonna be he's gonna be like the more efficient. Still gonna probably get the same assist, maybe an even better passer. I don't know if that's even true. But I think I think I the he's the version of Trey Young I would rather if I, if that makes sense. Um, I think that they're gonna put they're gonna try to put Brooke Lopez in a lot of pick and rolls with Darius Garland, a lot of pick and rolls with Donovan Mitchell. I think those two could try to feast on that. But at the same time, on the other end, I think Joe Holiday is gonna definitely try to he's gonna try to um, he's gonna try to pick apart those two guards if they have him ever guarding them. I'm, that's gonna be interesting to see who those two guards are gonna be guarding on the floor for, against the Bucks. There's gonna be people that the Bucks gonna have on the floor. I'm not gonna lie, that they get, try to hide them with. But I think those matchups that they have with Evan Mobley on Giannis, Jared Allen on Brooke Lopez. Jared, Brooke Lopez is going to take Jared Allen out the paint, but Evan Mobley on Giannis is going to be very interesting. They could even possibly, I'm not going to lie, they could even possibly try to put Jared Allen on Giannis and put Evan Mobley on Brooke and be have him play like a Roma role, kind of like how Giannis is. Because the only reason, only reason, the real thing why they try to put Brooke Lopez on the court with Giannis a lot is because they want... Brooke Lopez to be like a floor spacer, take the big out the paint, but on defense he can still be that rim protector. So it really does work out really well. But if they can figure out the right matchups to work against the Bucks, they could have the best matchups in the entire league. Forget who's in the playoffs; they have they probably have the best matchups in the league to try to match up against the Bucks. Um, but with all that being said, I do think the Bucks do go ahead and win this series. Um, Bucks just have by far the best player on the court. Um, even with those guard plays, like I was saying with the Hawks, Drew Holiday is such a good defender. They may even just let Drew Holiday try to die on those screens and just Drew Holiday still plays amazing defense on whoever he guards. Now, I will say, he can't guard both of them at the same time. So that'll be interesting. Just like I said with DeJounte Murray and uh, Trey Young, this is just a better version of that combo. Um, I do think DeJounte Murray being a defender may make a little bit more sense than this combo, but offensively, when it comes to going against a defender like uh, Drew Holiday, if I'm the Cavs, whoever Drew Holiday is not guarding, that's what I'm letting play the ball handler and just go crazy in the pick and roll, try to get Brooke Lopez into it. I'm letting that happen and, like, that's what I'm doing. 
that's just what I'm doing. I'm not gonna lie. That could be very that could be a big problem for the Bucks. I'm not gonna lie, that could be a big problem, but I'm gonna still say the Bucks because Giannis is just that good. He's just that good. Um, he's just that good. I can see Donald Mitchell having a big series in this uh, series, though. Depending on if Drew Holiday is guarding him. One of them is going to have a good series, for sure. Boston Celtics versus the 76ers. I'm going to keep it a beam with you. Embiid does not make it out the second round here. Um, Embiid had that 50 ball where they won against the Celtics, but... Jalen Brown didn't play, and the best defender on the Celtics to guard Embiid didn't play. And they barely beat the Celtics. So, yeah, I think the Celtics get these boys out the way. Not going to lie. If the Heat made it to this round, I think the Heat would even beat them. So, yeah, I ain't going to lie, 76ers. All that stuff y'all saying about Jokic, I'm not going to lie. Embiid really can't get out the second round, like, at all. Bubble or not, he can't. And he really has a problem beating. He really has a problem beating these Celtics. He does. Going on to the West, this could be really. This could really be the second best series in the playoffs. Oh no, that's cap. That's cap. This is gonna be a great series, though. This is gonna be the best series at this point in the playoffs. I think that that Grizzly Lakers series has potential. I think that Warriors Kings series has potential. Um. I think that Heat, seven, the Heat Celtics series has potential. But this series has incredible potential. I think I think Jokic dominates this series no matter who's guarding him. But I also think Kevin Durant dominates. I also think Devin Booker dominates. I think Devin Booker and KD are automatically getting 25 plus. But I do think Jokic could, he could easily average like a 25 and like 12 in this series. Even up to like 30 and 12 in this series quite easily. I don't. I don't like I don't like anything that the Celtics can really throw at Jokic in this series, to be honest. Another thing that's a really big impact for the Nuggets is Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray in the playoffs. All we've known about Jamal Jamal Murray is phenomenal basketball. He hoops every time, so it's gonna be interesting to see him back after two playoffs, missing two playoffs. To see how he's going to play in the playoffs. He hasn't really been that crazy to me in the regular season. But if he can get back to that level that he has been in prior seasons in the playoffs. This is going to be a great series, man. This is going to be a great series. I'm interested to see how these matches going to work against the Nuggets. I think KD will guard Michael Porter. I think KD may even guard Aaron Gordon. I'm not going to lie. He may even guard Aaron Gordon. Because KD has been a really good rim protector. Um... They may put somebody else on Michael Porter. I think they're going to put, like, a Kogi. They may put, like, a Kogi on uh, Jamal Murray. But I'm going to be honest. Jamal Murray going to have some great looks. Because Yoki just knows how to run a good offense. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be interesting to see. Um, Yoki, they're going to need Yoki to be a lot more aggressive. But, like I've said multiple times, I think the Suns, just, they just got that team in the West. I think they got the best team in the West. Um, I do got, think they got the best team. I think this could go seven, though. Seven or six. I'm gonna say the Suns winning seven though. I like I like that series. I, it could go either way, but I do. I, I just got more faith in Kevin Durant than I do uh, Jokic. Now, if K, KD could easily get hurt in this Clipper series, and yeah, I think the Nuggets end up winning that. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say the Suns. The Suns did also beat the Nuggets without KD, but he didn't have Jamal Murray at that point, so I'm not really basing this off that. And the Nuggets are just a much better team this year than they were that year. So, yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and say the Suns will go ahead and win. Now, the Warriors and the Grizzlies, a rematch of last year's second round matchup. Now, like I said earlier, the Warriors are not that same team this year, defensively at all. This could be a very, this could be a very, very bad matchup for the Golden State Warriors. I'm not going to lie. I want, as much, and listen to me, as much as I want the Warriors to, to make it to the conference finals to play Kevin Durant, I, bro, I'm telling y'all, if that that's that's a historic series. That would be the most historic conference finals we've had in a minute, man. Bucks versus the Celtics, KD versus the Warriors, man, that would boy, that's must see TV. But I'm not gonna lie, them boys in Memphis, I think a lot of I think a lot of people are sleeping on that Memphis team. 
they match up really well with every team besides the Nuggets and the Suns. I don't. I think they match up really well with against every team, bro. I think they got great defenders to go against the uh, Warriors. I think they got great defenders to go against the Lakers. They even got a rim protector that they can. They can. They, can, they even got a big that can play really good in the pick and roll that the Warriors are not gonna be able to really exploit. And the Warriors' defense this year is not as good last year, and the, the Grizzlies was giving them a run for their money last year. And they could have even beat them last year if John Morant didn't get hurt. So this could be very, very interesting. I think the, Gri the, the Grizzlies, they are way more motivated this year than last year. I'm going to be honest. I think that this could be the new, this could this could be kind of like that run last year that Luka had. I think Ja could have another run, but I think this is really more of a complete team run where Desmond Bain is going to play good. I think Jaron Jackson is going to play good. I think that time without um, Ja was a lot more important for them this year than last year because they're going to need those two to play to an another level. They're going to need them to play on that all-star caliber level this year in the playoffs, and I think they can. I'm going to say the Grizzlies. I think the Warriors' defense is really the biggest difference from last year that's going to hold them back from going to the conference finals. But this could all be capped because – Wiggins comes back, and their defense just goes to a different level. You know what I'm saying? But even when Wiggins was playing this year, their defense wasn't really that good. They haven't really been a good away team. They haven't been able to win away. And they're going to have to They're gonna have to have win away games against the Kings. They're going to have to win away games against the Grizzlies. I don't think they're going to be able to play consistent enough to be that same team they were last year. If they're the same team they were last year, I think they do make it to the conference finals. But they aren't that same team from last year. I'm going to have to say the Grizzlies make it to the conference finals. Man, I'm not going to lie. I did, I'm going to be honest. People may be like, you're just trying to do it. But I'm being honest. Based off these matchups, that's what I think is going to happen. Now, I'm pretty confident in what's going on with the East. Play-ins, I feel like the least confident I'm in am in the East, the play-ins. But what, what, who's winning what and when they get there, I think this is 100% how it's going to happen. Now, the Bucks and the Celtics. Now, one thing I haven't really said about the Bucks this entire time is Chris Middleton. But I'm not the biggest believer in Chris Middleton. I think that 2021 run was really fluke. That's not who Middleton is. Um, but if he can be half of what that is in this series, it could be all the difference. I do think the Celtics have better depth, but I think the Bucks have more depth. But I think having an eight-man rotation is more important in the playoffs than having 10 to even 11 people deep like the Bucks have. Um, I think the Celtics literally have eight starting caliber players. They have like three starting caliber guards. They have two all NBA caliber um, wings, and they have two starting caliber bigs. They really, really are that good. And I'm even forgetting Grant Williams. I always forget Grant Williams. He's another starting caliber player that may be on the edge of starting caliber, but he's a good, good role player. Um, I love, I'm not going to lie, man. I love the Celtics matchup versus the Bucks. I do. I do. I do. I love the Celtics matchup versus the Bucks, even if Chris Middleton plays. Even if Chris Middleton plays. I'm interested to see how the Celtics are going to guard Giannis in this series. Um, that game gave me a lot of faith for this series. The thing I'll say about the Celtics-Bucks is, when I watched the Celtics play the Bucks in that game, it said a lot of things that I'm saying in this video or that I'm thinking right now. The Celtics, if you watch that game, first quarter, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum were hunting. They were hunting. And they weren't hunting Brooke Lopez. They weren't hunting Drew Holiday. They weren't hunting nobody but who arguably is the best player in the world. They were hunting Giannis Antetokounmpo. Because Giannis is not a great on-ball defender. They were hunting that man. First quarter, Jalen Brown was going crazy. Next quarter, Jason Tatum taking turns on this man. Going crazy. They was literally toying with Giannis. And the real thing that's really important about that is not even really his defense. Put Making Giannis have to play on-ball defense is really important because that's going to wear that's gonna wear that man down on offense to the fact that you, if you know Giannis, He's kind of like Russ. He's gonna give you a he's gonna give you a hundred percent the whole game, and that's a W. I've messed with that, but if the Celtics are gonna do that, that could be very problematic. I don't know what the Bucks are gonna have to do 
to let Giannis be able to play his role defensively where he's a roamer on defense, where he can really kind of spare his energy but also play amazing defense off the ball where he's a great off the ball defender they don't really want him playing on the ball defense they really want drew Holiday to be that point of attack defender and they want brooke lopez to be that rim protector and they want Giannis to just be roaming around but it's really interesting to see how they played that they could definitely be sure they could have definitely shown that in that game to show the bucks what they're going to do in the playoffs and i'm and i said this earlier Mike Budenhoser is not a coach that really makes good adjustments or even makes any adjustments at all. So, I ran. Trust me. I hate the Celtics. I hate them. I hate the Celtics. I do. But, like I said, I got to be as unbiased as I possibly can. I think the Celtics, they end the year a lot more inconsistent than I really would like to be putting them in the in the finals again back to back years but yeah i think the celtics i think the celtics matchup wise i think they really are going to play interesting i think the celtics was even putting i think they was even putting Marcus smart on Giannis. they were literally letting Giannis shoot Giannis is not gonna be able to settle he's not a he's not nowhere near the shooter he was last year he scores more points this year but he's not nowhere near the mid-range score he was last year not nowhere near the three-point shooter he was last year i don't know what happened he was progress. He was getting better. I was last. I was like, if Giannis can keep getting better and better at all phases of the game, kind of like Braun did, it's gonna get scary for people. This year, he took a big step back again with the shooting, though. But he has been a lot more dominant scoring wise, but especially in the paint. But yeah, he's he's not really been crazy outside the paint this year. I will say that. And I think the 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 Celtics could really take advantage of that really a lot. It's gonna be interesting to see what they do. And I don't think the Bucks really have the matchup to really make. You're going to really need, like, some great three-point shooting guards to really make the Celtics play, like, honest with Giannis. And I don't think they're going to do that regardless. I don't think they're going to do that regardless. A lot of the Bucks three-point shooters are really spot-ups. Drew Holiday is an okay three-point shooter, but he's not, like, he's not, like, a, a Garland, a Donovan Mitchell, a Trey Young. He's not like that. He's not like that. So, they're going to need, they're gonna need a, a guard or even a wing to take to take the pressure off Giannis and be a really big shooter in that series, and I don't see that happening. Moving back into the West, I liked the Grizzlies matchups before now, but this is where it all ends. I like I like I still like some of these matchups, but Jaron Jackson, who is he gonna guard? Is he, are you gonna put Jaron Jack? Are you putting Jaron Jackson on KD? I think I think Stephen Adams could be back at this point. They could put they could put Jaron Jackson on KD. That's good matchups. They could put Jaron Jackson on KD. They could put Dylan Brooks on De Devin Booker. That's good matchups. I'm not going to lie. That's, that would be an interesting matchup for the Grizzlies. That would be very interesting matchups for the Grizzlies. I can't lie. Think about it. But it's all going to be dependent on Steven Adams coming back at that point. And I don't think the Suns is going to be that team that's just going to be allowing Ja, ja to just be crazy and i don't even think ja is as good as i'm hyping them up to be in this series i just think the matches where he they're gonna probably be taking ad out the paint with the lakers that's gonna be a big deal the warriors they're gonna be taking um they're gonna be taking i mean even if you take draymond out the paint that's not as big that's not nowhere near the same as the rim protector anthony davis is he's a great defender but he's just not nowhere near the rim protector ad is now when it comes to the suns i think they could try to play that same way, but I think the the Grizzlies are going to try to match up with the Suns. So defensively, it could be better for them. It could be better for them. But offensively, it could be a little bit less ideal. I think Ja could have a more struggle series in this series. Um, Desmond Bain could still play good. Jaron Jackson could still play good. But I think Ja's going to have a little bit more struggle in this series. And I've always been a person to say, I don't think KD is really one that really get locked up. It's really him missing shots and what's really around him more so than anything. Um, everybody is keen to have bad games. But I do think the combo of Devin Booker and Kevin Durant is just a little bit, it's a little bit too much even with those matchups because where the Lakers, they had good matches for the Lakers. I just don't think they're going to have as good of an offense Grizzlies-wise against the Suns. And I think the Lakers have a better defense than the Suns, for sure. I do. I think 
the Lakers have a better chance of beating the Grizzlies than the Warriors, personally. I'm not going to lie. But I do think the Suns, I think in, they could just really overwhelm them. Even with how good of the matchups they, they are, I don't know what it is. I just feel like the Suns, it's the Suns' year, bro. I really do just think it's the Suns' year. I think they're highly motivated after last year. I think there's a lot of stuff that's going into it for both teams, but I do think I trust the Suns just a tad bit more. Maybe it's my belief in KD. I don't know, but I got a pretty high belief in LeBron. I got a pretty high, I trust, I trust Bron, Stephen Curry a lot too, so. It's very, very, it's going to be interesting, but I do think the Suns can get that done because they can key in on, they can key in on KD as much as they want. It's going to be a lot easier for them to key in on Curry, though, than it is going to be for KD because you got to key, key in on KD and Devin Booker. So that's going to be interesting. And then last, last but not least, the Celtics and the Suns. This series this series now this series could be amazing i'm not gonna lie this series right here could really be phenomenal we get the kd he gets to rematch the celtics it could be very similar issues where the celtics they they seem to really try to attack your weaknesses on defense i'm interested to see what the celtics would try to do they would probably try to attack chris paul that's probably what they would try to do they would probably try to attack chris paul they may even try to attack KD to make him wear down on defense, but I think they would try to attack Chris Paul because that's kind of what they did last year with the Nets. They was attacking Patty Mills, the Seth Currys. I think they could try to do that same similar thing. But being real, I just think the Suns, I think that core four is just going to be a little too much. Now, I don't think the Suns have the craziest defense, but I think they can get away with their defense. I don't think their defense is bad by any means. I think it's... I think it's like middle of the pack, if that makes sense. I think the Celtics have amazing defense. I don't think their defense is nowhere near as good as it was last year, but I think it is still really good. Um, I think a lot of this with the Celtics that I'm saying when it comes to going against the 76ers, going against the Bucks, going against the Heat, is going to be very, very reliant on Robert Williams' health, if he can stay healthy. If he gets unhealthy, they could lose to the 76ers, and all this changes. You know what I'm saying? So I think if the 76ers go against the Bucks, I think the Bucks move on. So... That, this all could change based off one person really getting hurt. That's really not even like the top three, top four the player on that team. But he is that important for these matchups. So, and I don't think he's going to be as useful, uh, uh, to be honest, against the Suns, where he really wasn't that, he, he was oh, he was okay in that net series, but like he wasn't like the main contributor defensively. It was really Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown really doing the most work defensively it was really more wing defense they're gonna need something like that again in this series i think the celtics honestly out of all the teams the um sun's gonna play up to this point the celtics could match up really well for the suns it could be very interesting very interesting man this is this is a tough one because that marcus mart who he guards is gonna be very interesting I think they're going to try to that Jason Tatum on KD again. I think KD going to take that personal. I don't think he actually can honestly guard him, but he was he was guarding him last year. He was missing, making him miss shots. I think KD is more of a make or miss person, but I can't get away from the facts. He did. So I could see this being a very interesting series. I think D-Book, KD, it's going to be very interesting. I think they're going to try to do – I think the Suns could try to exploit some things about the Celtics when it comes to Robert Williams trying to be, like, more of a drop coverage type player. Maybe he wants to be more of a roamer. It's going to all really depend on who's that fifth player on the court for the Suns. I think the Suns – the Celtics as well are going to try to exploit who's that CP3 matchup a lot. I'm not going to lie. As much as I want to say the Suns, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I talk about it. I think the Celtics get this done. I've said time and time again, no matter who comes out the East, that's who's going to win. No matter how much I want to be biased for the Suns, I got to keep it a B. I do think the Celtics end up go ahead and win that finals. And they get their ring. They finally get their ring after all those conference finals. They got deeper and deeper and de pause. What the hell am I on? They got, they, they got further and further in the playoffs making the conference finals like three years, making it to the NBA finals last year, and now being an NBA championship. I think this could be the year. As long as they can get past Giannis, I think this could really, really be the year. No matter who comes out the West, 
I'm, it could be the Lakers, it could be the Warriors, it could be the Suns, it could be the Nuggets. They play the Nuggets, that's probably the worst matchup for the Celtics. I'm not going to lie. They really don't have anything for Jokic. They don't. I don't think they have anything for Jokic. Just like with the 76, they don't really have anything for Embiid. But Embiid, if you notice in that game where he had barely won and he had 50, he had over half of his team's points. That's not a good way to win. Um, um, I think the Nuggets, the way they play, it's more team-centric than just one player where the 76ers kind of have those that hard. I've said multiple times, Embiid is like a big man Harden, where it's a better version because it bigs or just it's just more it's like better for the playoffs to be a dominant offensive big but to be real with you it's still a little too reliant on one person and i think that's not gonna be enough to really be a team as deep as the celtics same thing with the bucks i think the bucks can get exploited it's a lot of things that the Celtics is gonna be able to exploit i may be overrating their coach but i do think that a lot of stuff is gonna work in that in the in the factor of the celtics um I think the Celtics have a chance to even lose in the first round and all of this is messed up. But that is what I believe ends up happening in the NBA playoffs. So yeah, if you guys want more of these NBA videos, like I said at the beginning, I'm going to be honest. This is my honest hot take or whatever you want to call it. My honest opinion with everything that can happen. A lot of stuff could be different. The Lakers go ahead and beat the Grizzlies and then the Warriors will end up beating them. The Nuggets could beat the Suns and they don't even end up making it to the conference or the, to the finals. The Bucks could end up being the Celtics and they end up being the ring. That's Giannis' second ring. The Celtics could end up losing to the Heat. They could even lose into the 76ers. There's a lot of stuff that could happen. The Cavaliers, like I said earlier, that's probably the best matchup for the Bucks in the entire playoffs. They could end up beating the Bucks. So it's a lot of stuff that could end up happening. I really want to see that Bucks Sun series just like I want to see that Celtics Sun series. But it's interesting how this could end up falling into place. Um, I've said time and time again. The difference between that Bucks and Celtics series was really just KD missing shots, in my opinion. I do think the um, people that Steve Nash had on the floor had a big difference, but he wasn't really, he wasn't really calling plays much different, to be honest. Um, even j even in that series with the Bucks, James Harden was trolling a lot of situ possessions, giving KD the ball at the end of the shot clock. So it really was interesting. It kind of can depend on just KD making the missing shots. But I think the Celtics just has a little too much. And I think the Celtics could go ahead and win. But yeah, like I said, that's going to be the end of this video. If you guys want more, like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on post case. Be the first to every single one of the videos. Share this video to anybody think will help. Without further ado, though, man, it's your boy Fitz. Out to be, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!